Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to, uh, in the next seven minutes, uh, explain to you what we have found out over the past three and a half years, written up in 1,535 pages and delivered in a summary for policymakers to the policymakers. We have organized our assessment along these three questions. What do we observe? Do we understand what we see and measure? And how might the future be? If you want to know more than just the seven minutes that I deliver, please look up uh, all the material at www.climatechange2013.org. Based on millions of measurements over the past 112 years, we can make one of uh, the very simple headline statements, which says warming in the climate system is unequivocal. You see the warming is prevalent uh, around the entire planet, but there are also locations where we cannot make a statement because of the absence of quality or length of the time series. But what we see is unequivocal. We also measure the uptake of energy in the ocean by precisely measuring temperature in the top 2,000 meters of the world ocean the largest component of the climate system. And there, things are also unequivocal. We see a warming which we can translate into an uptake of energy that is visible here on this diagram for the last 40 years. We also can make causal relationships between what we see and measure and what the origin and the cause of the changes are. The cause, of course, is the chemical composition and its changes of the atmosphere caused by the emissions of uh, greenhouse gases by man, uh, caused by the burning of fossil fuels and deforestations, which have led to an increase of carbon dioxide concentration that exceeds now 30% of ever the concentrations that we have me measured and reconstructed in the last 800,000 years. Taking this cause, we then compare the observations of the warming on the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, on the land, in the ocean, the occurrence of extreme events and the changes in the statistics thereof, the changes of the water cycle, the retreat of the sea ice in the northern hemisphere, the retreat of the glaciers around the world, and the shrinking of the ice sheets. And last but not least, the integrative measure of the global change encapsulated in the rise of the global mean sea level. All that the scientists have linked causally to the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that's why we assert in our summary for policymaker that human influence on the climate system is clear. This is a headline statement. It is not only crafted by the scientific community in a consensus process, but also accepted by the governments around the world. These are the projections of how the world looks like in a scenario that respects the so-called two-degree target in which global warming should be limited to that temperature. It will be a warmer world, obviously, but also a world in which precipitation has changed, as you see from the graph below. Compare this to a world that warms by 4.5 degrees in the global mean, which means on the continent, warming in excess of 5 degrees, in the high latitudes of the northern hemisphere, warming in excess of 7 degrees, arguably a completely different world from what we are used to today. More importantly, along with the temperature, also precipitation changes, and that means, in plain terms, the water cycle changes, the occurrence, the amount, and the time when precipitation is occurring will change around the globe. This is one of the most important resources of humankind and of ecosystems. Sea level will also increase. Uh, here you see a graph of the sea level increase from 1700 right to today. Since the beginning of the 20th century, we have registered 19 centimeter of sea level rise, 
What you see on the right hand side of this diagram are two scenarios of sea level rise. The scenario that limits temperature growth to two degrees and the business as usual scenario that I showed before to lead to a warming of 4.5 degrees. For that scenario we are speaking of a sea level rise by the end of the 21st century of 98 centimeters on top of the 19 centimeters. What that means for adaptation and the possibility and capability of adaptation, that is a question that is responded to by the second working group. And finally, I want to show you again these two worlds that the scientists have extracted from, from a a, a huge effort of climate model simulations over the past three and a half years, but it is based on decades of research in the physical science basis. The fact that we put together these two worlds, 2 degree and 4.5 degree, also means that today we do have a choice between those, these two worlds. These two choices mean that there are requirements, of course, the requirement for the two degree world means drastic, sustained and long-term reductions of emissions of greenhouse gases. Thank you very much for your attention.